My name is Divine Favor Adebayo, and you do watch our farmers media. Very interesting there. I've heard, I've seen one man divine, a devil, talking the Nigerian Ogao style. Thank you so much for joining us for the evening farm drive here at a farmer's media. My name is Jackie Mo, and I'm joined by two people who I don't want to be in the room with <laughs> at this moment. But yes, thank you so much, guys, for making time to be with uh, me today in the, to have this discussion today. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having us also. Yeah, probably mm -hmm. you'll start by saying your name. My name is Robert Mokio, and uh, I've been running the morning show here. Mm -hmm. oh, my name is Christine Mutindi, and I am a good guest today. <laughs> 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 I said, I say you're going I to I say it. We met on Twitter <laughs> talks one time uh, uh -huh. during the GMO discussion. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's why I'm saying I don't want to be in the same room <laughs> at this particular. I don't even know why I decided. Can you change the topic? <laughs> <laughs> there, there's something I've seen on uh, one of the social medias. At when God told animals to respect people, did mosquitoes attend the meeting? <laughs> I, I don't think they were. I don't think they do because they like disturbing people when you <laughs> just want to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so today we want to talk about the GMO debate. Are they the solution to food security? We've uh, seen so many stories in the news that are making headlines about maize importation, about the, the lifting of the ban on GMOs. And uh, there's a story I saw on uh, the new CS Linturi contradicting a uh, curious declaration that the government had not ordered any maize. I don't know, have you been following those stories on uh, maize importation before we delve into the GMO debate? Maybe our guests can start. <laughs> 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 well, um, I think uh, the government, just please repeat the question once more. Have you heard the stories about uh, maize importation? Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. And I think it is uh, lack of people and people not really understanding uh, the process that comes with importation. Once that it docks, there's a process that goes. It might take two or three months, okay? But now people just saying that uh, the maze has been rejected, we don't want it. I, I think public participation is part of this for people to understand and to be open-minded, even though adamance comes with a lot of this. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, we also have, uh, we got news yesterday that the High Court uh, stopped the importation of that means uh, whatever we, uh, we are discussing about the importation is null and void because the government, uh, through the high court, has put a stop to the, the final corn coming into the country. Now that takes us back to the debate before the high court you know, allows it in or decides to, to uphold the decision. Do we really need to have the conversation about GMOs? healthy for, for us. Mm -hmm. So probably that is where we are basing our discussion from today. Do we allow the maize, the maize, because I'm not talking about other, there are so many other grains that come in and uh, mm -hmm. the GMO and people do not know. Yes. There are so many things that are in our supermarkets that are GMO. But now we've just because somebody talked about um, the maize, that's where, when the conversation came out. Yes. So we need to now fully understand how is it being regulated? And the National Biosafety Authority, mm -hmm. which now should be like uh, the key decision maker in this uh, situation, yeah. because it's been, it's a, it's a parastatal that uh, was passed through an act of parliament that's supposed to regulate anything that touches on uh, the genetic component of the food that we are eating in this country, the biosafety mm -hmm. and the hazard that comes therein. Mm -hmm. So we need, they need to come up clearly, like you've said, come out to the public, involve public participation. Mm -hmm. Tell us the way they did during uh, the, uh, it was Kenya, uh, not Kenyatta, back in time. Yes. The uh, scientists came out and said, you know what, we've done research and we've realized there are people who are affected by mm -hmm. GMOs. And that is where the government 
put a ban. That is in 2013. Yeah, 20, yes. No, no. During uh, Mugo, Beth Mugo's time. Yes. 2013. Yes. Yeah, she, there was a task force that was formed to yes. to investigate about the effects of GMO yes. on the people, on the people and that is when the ban was put now. Out of, uh, so it's pro like uh, there was something that was found to be hindering the human people for the ban to be imposed. It was, it was a research done on, on some mice and they based on that not research. Humans. No, not humans. No, not humans. <laughs> why, why? We need, <laughs> we need, we need the, the exact... <laughs> You know, anything negative is, is enough to affect, mm. however negative it is. Yes. So they saw some negative impact of some of the GMOs, mm. and that that was enough to give the, the, the country a go ahead to put a ban on all the importation. So now that forms the basis of our, uh, today's discussion. There was a, a negative impact on uh, the the guinea pigs that were tested and uh, so what imposed uh, what uh, informed this lifting of the ban now have things changed or why the rush so you see uh, what happens is uh, for scientists the research are preliminary right based on a research i can give a population of let's say 20 mice out of 20 mice mm -hmm. there are three mice that show some effects on it here that can be maybe an error from side or maybe uh, there are some concerns that were not considered. Now, if you do the test, like the, this task, the other task force that was done before the, the lifting of the bound was uh, uh, put to place, the more research was done, and that is where the National Biosafety Authority was came in, yeah? and more research that were done, mm -hmm. and probably uh, from the findings, uh, there were some scientists, I think, who were given some uh, task to yes, do a research. they did. And they, they mm -hmm. gave out a report, mm -hmm. and they said, they gave out a clean bill of health. They said, this is it, this thing is okay, government can, can go. Now, where the issue comes in, uh, it is the National Bell Safety Authority needs to take tests. You see, the way Warma does, before you chimba your bohol, mm -hmm. before you do your bohol, mm -hmm. you need to take the water sample, mm -hmm. and then make sure that it's clean for human consumption. True. Before, if it's if it doesn't pass through that test, your borehole, you won't be able to do a borehole. Mm. That is the same work the National Bio Safety Authority is doing to ensure mm -hmm. that we'll take the samples of the maize, we'll take it to the lab, we we'll look at it, we we'll do tests with dry rats, or to make it easy, they look at the companies that are already importing the maize, all the ones that we got the maize from, mm -hmm. they look at their tests, they bring up total test, mm -hmm. they give it to, to the authority, mm -hmm. they analyze the, the test results, mm -hmm. say this is good. Yeah. If it is 90%, well and good. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm told is that it never passed through by our safety, I don't know, I don't want to speculate. <laughs> don't, Please don't, don't speculate. Don't <laughs> those are, are Robert's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Robert yeah. remarks. <laughs> but again, I think according to uh, the NBA chair, mm -hmm. the biosafety chair, he said uh, that um, the GMO will redefine agriculture yes. in Kenya. How? Uh, because now the use of biotechnology, um, it will reduce the dependence of water on these crops. Yes. Because he said that uh, they have done tests and some of these crops, some of them are drought resistant and pest resistant as well. Very true. And that is where it takes us to that. Uh, I'm coming, I'm coming to tell you. Let, let her finish. Okay. I'm coming, okay. I'm coming to tell you. See, as, you. See, just as Robert said, I'd just like to add on what he said. Uh, the test that come with GMO, it's not a test that was done 10 years ago and it started maybe last year. It's a process. Okay. So they keep doing the tests. Yeah. They keep sure. doing the tests. So this mice, they have different batches of the guinea pigs. Mm -hmm. They have these ones and these ones, and they're using different crops as well. Mm -hmm. So as the testing continues, it shows if they improve on something else, then it will also show on the guinea pigs. And that is why they will give the report that this, some of these crops are drought resistant and pest resistant as well. Okay, so was mm. God wrong when he created, he, he, he had his own creations that required water. We still need this insects and pests for the ecosystem to survive. So when you when you come up with this new kind of technology, you've mm -hmm. said we embrace biotechnology, mm -hmm. when you come up with these new technologies, what is this that is added? What is this gene that is added for this crop or even animal to be resilient to drought and even continue living without water? 
Well, you see, even for an insect, there's something that attracts it to that crop, mm -hmm. that specific crop. Mm -hmm. So God was not wrong. He mm -hmm. was really right. Mm -hmm. But again, he also made us with brains, and we have geniuses. Mm -hmm. We cannot also suppress them because they are also God's creation. Mm -hmm. And remember, it is not all the crops or all the plantations. Mm -hmm. So these insects can also survive on other crops. Mm -hmm. It is only that these ones that we have to consume so that we ensure there's food security. Mm -hmm. Remember, they're trying to find the foundation mm -hmm. for food security. Mm -hmm. In that, our animals are not going to die. We are not going to depend on um, food donations from other countries. Mm -hmm. That is the whole point. Mm -hmm. It is not about we want to suppress the insects, we want to kill them, we want to do this. No. Mm -hmm. We just want to have food security. We want to have much more yield. Mm -hmm. We want to have bumper harvests. Mm -hmm. Like you can harvest a hundred bags of maize. That is just what we want. It is not a matter of we want to maybe kill the insects or anything like that. Interesting. Here you've talked about scientists and I you know you're one of those scientists <laughs> <laughs> who are busy locking yourself somewhere in a room and doing those two tiny, tiny bits. Mm -hmm. But my question is, where have these scientists been all this time that uh, they are now coming out because we have this GMO technology? Who funds their researches and... Um, where are they? Uh, is GMO, me, according to me, GMO is a short-term solution because there's a reason why there's food insecurity to begin with. Mm -hmm. GMOs is only coming to assist in that situation, particular situation. But as you know, the GMO seeds cannot be replanted. So yes, we can have the 100 bucks this, only this period. Mm -hmm. What will happen next after no, that? One thing we also forgetting is that uh, these are companies out there to make profit. Cannot just start a company. It's not a charity that they should sure. doing. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Very so, true. So what, you what you spend, people have spent billions. Then that is research. pushing our farmers into slavery. People have, uh, 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 have spent companies have spent billions in research, and then why do we allow you to just replicate the seed by planting it again? <laughs> now? you know they are making. Okay, that is the capitalistic nature of, of us as human. But again, we're looking at all these effects of. Uh, what we are suffering from right now is, is because of our activities as human beings. True. If we did not take care of the environment, if we followed everything, if we did not industrialize, we couldn't be having climate change. And because of that, we need to mitigate. And that is the easiest way to mitigate is to solve issues that are directly a result of, the, of our activities. Now, we cannot, our maize cannot grow because of uh, insufficient rainfall. What do we do? We find a solution, and the only solution we can do is come up with a seed that can be able to withstand the harsh conditions. Mm -hmm. That is to help us in food security. That's a pro. But now, when we look at it, have we altered? Have we tried to play God in this uh, situation? We've played God and we've played devil at the same time. The ones who are messing up the environment. <laughs> now we are trying to mitigate. We are the judge and yes. jury. Yeah. Yeah, we're the ju and then somebody made it. Uh, one of my professors said, "It is our doing and our, our undoing that will mm -hmm. make us as a species go in, e extinct. Mm -hmm. Because the moment human beings go extinct, the whole world will flourish. True. That is one thing that we need to to understand." Mm -hmm. What, are you, what is your take on uh, scientists and uh, them coming out now to talk about biotechnology? And um, is GMO a short-term solution, according to you? Are there other options that the scientists themselves need to explore to sort this whole situation of food insecurity? You see, um, scientists have been there. They have been doing their thing behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Just as someone has been there, it's only that we have not focused on that person at that time. Yeah. So right now we are focusing on them because we want to hear what they have to say. Yeah, true. So they have been there mm -hmm. and they have been seeing these things. For a long time. And you might even find someone so they fore foresaw this thing even 15 years ago. It's only that we didn't focus on that. As human beings, there's something that draws our attention. So we were not drawn to scientists and GMO at that time. But truth be told, we have been consuming GMO products. Okay. <laughs> 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 really? Really? Yes. Yes.
the most dangerous part of uh, GMO is actually in the bacterium GMO, mm -hmm. when you alter bacteria. That is where we can go and now start talking about uh, dangers of the GMOs, mm -hmm. especially to the environment. Our first priority when we look at the dangers of GMOs, not to the human body, it's to the environment. How can it, uh, can we come up with a species that will destroy the others? Let me give you a little story about my professor. What I came to learn during my study of a GMO back in college, that there was, a <coughs> there was an organization that was doing a research on coming up with a bacteria that can be able to, it's like a, okay, I can't remember the name, it's like a bacterial fixing, it, it's, it's a bacteria that's supposed to improve the soil, uh, break down uh, humors and create nutrients. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, uh, at the same time, read a few things here and there. Now, it was about to be taken to for for to the farms, to human, to people's farms. It was passed all that until one uh, student who was doing his uh, master's, I think PhD, uh, an attaché, uh, did some tests on soil, and realized that when that bacteria was put on soil conquered almost uh, all the plants around there. It made plants not survive around the area there. And that was yeah. just a simple bacteria. Uh -huh. So it was estimated, I actually put it in my page, the whole story of what happened. So could it be put uh -huh. to the soil, uh -huh. the whole world could be extinct now. Uh -huh. It was in the 90, 94, 90 something. If it was put by then, we could not be alive now. Uh -huh. Why would someone lock themselves up in a room to destroy the world? You see, you, you, what, what they, <laughs> like, they wanted to do is to come up with this bacteria that can, you know... Why, why you should even put yourself through all that trouble? <laughs> like, do, do you know, like, there are people who are doing serious research, serious even research, yes. human beings, and how to create a superhuman being. Uh -huh. And cloning of people. Cloning of people. Yeah. There are people who are doing serious research. That's not serious. <laughs> that's <laughs> not serious to me. <laughs> that's, that's, that's madness. I, I, I saw, uh, 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 <laughs> that's I saw, madness. I, saw, I don't know, they're doing pigs that have human kidneys. So that uh, should you be needing kidneys, you can get from that, that pig. You can imagine such kind of uh, scientific moves. <laughs> Matthias, let me just <laughs> remain with my brain the way I am. I don't want to, to conduct any research. <laughs> I think is it in Poland or, or in uh, one of these nations in Europe where mm -hmm. they've discovered over 1,500 brains, mm -hmm. brains inside uh, uh, some room uh, underground, of which they, yeah, they were using for research on bi the bipolar and uh, Schizophrenia. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Now that I don't, don't want to Lots of brains. Mm -hmm. They've been stored some. Human brains, yeah, are they alive? Brain. Or? Uh, people died a long time ago when they're still doing a research on diseases like bipolar. Mm. So when you die because of that, they remove your brain and they preserve it somewhere. Mm -hmm. So it was, I just read a Google story on that. I was like, oh, interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Even me, I'm interested in that. <laughs> but <laughs> yes, but just leave my brain alone the way it is. <laughs> I don't want to overthink and over research that I'm locking myself in studying about something, like, let's just digest on uh, Mwakio's uh, stories here. <laughs> we'll be taking a short break. Uh, Britha, uh, we'll be back shortly. Let's take a look at uh, what uh, some of the viewers have to say about GMO and their take on GMO. What exactly do they know about GMOs? We'll be back shortly. Bila maji. Yeah, Mwisho Kenya imepitisha ile ban yenye ilikuwa kwa GMO. Yeah. Sijui kama unaweza mbegu za GMO na maoni yako ni yapi kuhusu GMO? GMO, huko watu wazi mbegu za GMO. Aha. Mhm. tunauza mbegu nyingine vile tuseme mbegu za Tanzania. Uh -huh. Ivo kwa wingi. Tuseme asilimia kubwa hapa tunauza mbegu za kutoka Tanzania. Maoni yako kwa GMO ni nini? Maoni yangu kwa GMO ni GMO naona labda sijajua GMO ni nini. Ni, ni. GMO sijajua ni nini? Sasa maoni yangu kwa GMO kulingana na sijajua GMO ni nini. Siwezi nikatoa maoni kwa GMO. Ni nzuri, ni mbaya. Maoni yako GMO GMO oh, GMO mimi naona kama lazima kuna kitu unajua kidogo kuhusu GMO. GMO naona kama si nzuri. Mhm. Uh -huh. uh, kwa hivyo isikubaliwe. Eh, isikubaliwe. 
This is this, this is a farmer's a farmer's a farmer's media. A farmer's media. We tell you the stories of African farmers. Welcome back to the Evening Farm Drive with me, Jackie Mo. We are having a very interesting discussion. Myself, I, I won't say I used to because I'm still anti-GMO. I'm yet to be convinced that I've even consumed... Like, really? <laughs> Have I ever eaten GMO? Mm -hmm. How can someone tell whatever they're consuming, whether it's GMO or not? <laughs> How can you tell? You've said most of the food we buy in supermarkets are GMO. It's one of the scotch. Some of the, the foods that you're eating in your, are seeds that are imported uh, and are GMO, genetically modified. Like they're saying like soya, soya, soya seeds are, 94% of soya seeds are genetically modified. Thank and that's how it's that mm -hmm. that you've got. Mm -hmm. Even the seeds mm -hmm. themselves, maybe you've planted. I was reading, you know, people keep on sharing a lot of controversies online about GMO. Mm -hmm. Somebody was talking about seeds. In South Africa, they're saying 90% of the seeds in South Africa are yet to confirm uh, an, uh, GMO. I mean, they are no longer having green seeds. Mm -hmm. I don't know how true that is, but you know, you cannot rely on these things people keep on sharing yes. on, on the social, social media. media. Yeah, but <coughs> what we can say is that uh, a lot of research are going on. Uh, most African countries have not reached that level of uh, research. All we can only do is maybe replicate whatever has been done or in, in, in the research that other countries or Monsanto has, has done and uh, we, we now get the guidelines. But uh, And uh, unfortunately, some of these companies don't give out their research, details of their research. You see, that's where the problem is. Mm -hmm. So we cannot have GMO coming from the high seas. Some of them we cannot even track the country of origin because we bought we bought them in the high seas. Mm -hmm. By the time they come to dock in Kenya, they need to go through all that process. Processes. That's why you were talking about the processes that Two months, go a couple of months. Yeah. months. Mm -hmm. You need uh, cabs needs to be there to check quality. Then the national health safety has to sure. come yeah. hand in hand, check how good it is, the toxic levels, you know, things like aflatoxin and whatnot mm -hmm. have, have to be checked. So if you hurry such things, you, you know, you can even kill a whole population. Sure. Did you hear what happened in Gambia with the cough syrup? Yes, the addictive one. Uh, no, that was in Nigeria. Nigeria. Uh -huh. In in um, in Gambia, uh -huh. they, there's a cough syrup that was imported from, from India. Uh -huh. So it's very easy. They don't have strict regulations in, uh -huh. their, in that country. So most mothers were giving children uh, the cough the syrup. Cough syrup. 
such a devouring and having very bad reactions. 66 children died. 66 and more, very, and more are hospitalized. Mm -hmm. And you know, you wonder why it's in one specific country and that that uh, biomedical company is actually selling different drugs to different countries. Mm -hmm. So you now it looks at your safety checks with individual countries. Um, uh, when they checked, that made Scared now, but why <laughs> would someone, why go to that extent of... Scared now, but why <laughs> would someone, why go to that extent of creating something that will kill at the end of the day? Uh, just to add on what he said, mm -hmm. you, you might find that that specific medicine was supposed to be uh, disposed mm -hmm. because during the production they found maybe there was a problem. Mm -hmm. But someone just decided, so personally person. decided, to just take the medicine and come and sell it. So you see, it's not a matter of, because as you see, even in Kenya, chems are sometimes, uh, they start doing, uh, they go in chemists and they close down. Why do they do that? Not because of the licensing, but also because some of the medicine in there is not supposed to be sold to people. Mm -hmm. But they're still selling. Mm -hmm. So you see, it, it also depends on greed and yourself, your personality. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that is why you did ask the question, are we playing God? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So are we playing God? That is what is determined because if someone decides to come and sell something that is not fit for human consumption, yeah. That person is the person with the problem, not us. Okay. Well put. No, um, okay, you've, you've talked about uh, poor poverty and uh, some countries being poor and ending up uh, buying the, the, the cheap uh, yeah, things at, at, at sea. Um, so in short, you're, try, you're saying Kenya is poor. No. <laughs> I'm saying beggars are not choosers. Exactly. <laughs> beggars are not choosers. <laughs> something we do. You see, basically, why they even brought this GMO is to counter the hunger that is in, in Kenya. Right? Mm -hmm. And according to the the CS of agriculture yesterday, he said he's giving uh, farmers 48 hours mm -hmm. to sell your maize. Why? Because the government is thinking these guys are holding the maize. Mm -hmm. They are holding the maize so that the price goes up. So that when the price goes up, they, they take start. It. They start so now they say, you know, it's either you sell it or we bring the GMO, we sell it at a cheaper price. Mm. So that's, there's a lot of politics when mm. it comes to, to the maize and yeah. the GMO and whatnot. Mm. The push me, pull you kind of uh, drift that we are seeing, it's all political because people are trying to point a finger. But at, at the end of the day, the intended, uh, the intention of the maize is to curb this uh, food security that we are having. Mm -hmm. then, uh, I'm traveling, I traveled last, the other week, people are really having some maize now. Mm, there's a lot of maize. Yeah. Yes. Lot of Which lot part of, of the country are you? I, I was on the side of Kibwezi, passing Kibwezi, they, they, no, they... No, you have to pass through Emali, Kambi. Oh, yeah, yeah, Emali, yes. People are really, with maize, people are doing maize. Western Kenya people are really doing maize. Mm -hmm. You ask yourself why? Why why are we still importing, importing maize? maize. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because the demand keeps on going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yes. I think also by by twenty fifty mm -hmm. we'll be at ninety five million. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we really manage. Uh, and and the the population the, 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 no the, food. Where are the fields to plant that the maize to sustain ninety five million Kenyans? Where is it? And unfortunately also production is going lower. Exactly. Kind of production that we are getting is mm. going up. Mm. That's why I was talking to somebody, a friend of mine, who was uh, telling me there's lo lots of concern, especially on production. Mm -hmm. Like Kitale, for example, nothing has changed. People are saying it's going on. Mm -hmm. Seriously, because there's higher demand there. The demand is getting higher there, so there's no, by the time it leaves out to go out for sale, mm. the, the the production, the, the production is low. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So that brings me to the question, is, is GMO the way to go? As much as um, we have the issue of uh, the genes that are put to make the crops and animals, can GMO be done on animals? Because we are only focusing on the crops. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's, uh, 
living organism. That's what we call it genetically mod modified organism. Okay. The two types of GMO, the two types of uh, altering of the DNA, we have the mitochondrial altering or mitochondrial DNA. That is as traits that can be passed through parents down the seeds. Eh? And then have, we have the nucleic uh, DNA, mm -hmm. where that alters like a specific, uh, let's say we want a specific trait mm -hmm. of this, if we can be able to make it better. So there's that altering. You know, like the G D, uh, GMO is actually going to the lab, mm -hmm. getting the cells, getting the genes, mm -hmm. doing that, and replicate, taking back the, the modified cell, gene and putting up to new cells, mm -hmm. letting them replicate. Mm -hmm. That is GMO. Mm -hmm. But the Kitambo, we saw this uh, breeding. You know, breeding is a, as a form of a traditional GMO. Mm -hmm. You want, let's say, like you want a German Shepherd. Mm -hmm. Or you want this specific trait of a dog. You go and search for somebody's dog, or mm -hmm. the other lady has a, mm -hmm. a tough dog. Mm -hmm. You get that, you breed it, or you breed, you breed, you breed, you, until you get a specific trait. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's a modification. Mm -hmm. That's a breed modification. Mm -hmm. But now, GMO is what happens in GMO you are now shortening that, you're making a shortcut. Mm -hmm. You're doing it very fast so that you get um, you get a desired trait that you need. Where is the problem? She just said it. Mm -hmm. When greed comes, when politics comes, whatever we, the, the intended, uh, the intention that is needed in GMO cannot be uh, found. Mm -hmm. we, we, you want to make money real fast, mm -hmm. and then you put steroids on your chicken. Mm -hmm. See, yeah. in three months you're already making profit. <laughs> <laughs> profit from what? Like, uh, well, to them it's profit. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is it. Depends on your GMO. conscience. Yeah. GMO is faster growth. Uh, you spend less in terms of uh, chemicals, or not water, because they're disease uh -huh. resistant. Uh -huh. I doubt if you'll they spend know. less, because at the end of the day, like the seeds cannot be replanted. Um, do, you I've, 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 do you want the I've seed or do you want the produce? Exactly. <laughs> I want <laughs> the produce, yes, yeah. but I don't want to go back and buy the seed again because the seed is not cheap. But again, anyway. you see, if it means higher yield, it means uh, one, let me use the example of a maize plant. Mm -hmm. One maize plant is going to have so many uh, yeah, stocks. stocks. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that is higher yield. Mm -hmm. And you're going to use less water. Mm hmm. Okay. So, and you make it to the company, you have to make it a win-win, yeah? Uh -huh. Because you, today, you let's say you make a lot of profit. Instead of sell, selling one cob, you sell five cobs, right? Mm -hmm. You make money, yeah? <laughs> now, that company that has made you rich <laughs> will also want to be rich. Mm -hmm. So why should you use the seeds? <laughs> Go exactly. back and buy more seeds. <laughs> Make money, so it's a win-win situation. It's a win-win situation. That, that is leverage. And again, that is and again leverage. let me use the example of an African home. Now, probably you're married, so where your parents, that piece of land, they're mm -hmm. supposed to share it. Mm -hmm. Where are you going to buy another piece of land from? Mm -hmm. You have children. Mm -hmm. So all of you depend on that land. Mm -hmm. So if you use, we probably use the traditional maize. Mm -hmm. We just get five bags. Mm -hmm. By the end of three months, we'll be buying more maize. You'll be buying, yes, but you'll still have your kabank somewhere, even if you don't get the seed. Because I'm imagining in 10 years to come, this GMO seeds will have already been remodified again, remodified again. And probably there's this taste that you liked from the first GMO. So, like, where will you get this seed? You cannot save this seed to be planted in another season. Or you cannot even breed these seeds the way you have the seed savers who come. You get a seed your from where to... No. That is not your <laughs> what do you mean? You I'm the farmer. I know. And buy seeds, right? Exactly. I, unless you want to start a new <laughs> factory of uh, seed processing. <laughs> your work is to go, plant, get your mm -hmm. yields, mm -hmm. burn down, mm -hmm. redo it, go and buy seeds. <laughs> It People should not be again, that way. It should again, not be that way. And again, just mm -hmm. about uh, the traditional or maybe the maize that is not GMO. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the problems that we have less production of the maize is because of bad use of the soil. Mm -hmm. We're using mm -hmm. fertilizer. We are overusing it. Mm -hmm. So the soil is acidic. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, I, was, I went to another farm uh, last the other weekend. Somebody was telling me, you know, I keep on putting water in this, <laughs> but the plants are, are, are dry. Mm -hmm. This person was, uh, where, where they bought the land was in a farm next to the river. 
you realize these people, the person who sold that land had used and overused that fertilizer. Soil, soil that even grass, you see grass mm -hmm. cannot grow. Grass it's plain. It's like sandy soil. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Only we know how to do this, this <laughs> is now you let it rejuvenate sometimes. Mm -hmm. Let your your soil heal. Mm -hmm. you know, if you there are people who constantly you will do you will dig, you will dig, you will put a lot of fertilizers, but you're killing your, your, your soil. And I think that's another topic for another day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So uh, that, we, that is why I feel like sometimes uh, the anti-GMO, it's like you're throwing stones and you're living in a glass house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 they did just say that. <laughs> 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 yeah, they're, they're actually worrying. Like, let's say, uh, the, the risk of mutation. Yes. Mutation is something that scientists because you do not know how and scientists do not know how sometimes cells operate mm -hmm. that's why you, you've never gotten the cure of cancer mm -hmm. you see some cells can mutate and and that is how easily you can even destroy the whole planet mm -hmm. by coming up with a plant that becomes um, uh, which word can I use that can you know like you see this empty once it grows it you can nothing can grow around it yes yeah, it sucks invasive. the life. Yeah. It sucks the life of the other plants. You can get an invasive mm. plant mm. that once you grow it yet, now destroys all the, mm -hmm. the ecosystem there. And once you, you destroy the ecosystem, now you, you have a whole... Yeah, those are concerns, and are major concerns. Mm -hmm. And that's why there are people who are tasked to do research. There are people in universities. Mm -hmm. There are people who are in organizations like this National Biosafety. Their work is to ensure that nothing like that misses and goes to... to to the general, uh, probably to the land that destroys the, the environment. Yeah, that's a concern. Uh, these uh, allergies, they, they test allergies on on on, on rats. We want to see if how rats and guinea pigs, because they have almost uh, just a, similar, uh, a few difference in our genetic makeup, mm -hmm. so they can know if maybe it can affect the liver, it can affect the kidneys. They can be able to identify. Now, it also, also depends with individuals, you know, it can, af it can affect one person this way and another person. See, like, we saw this medicine, you can make chloroquine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. chloroquine. Yes. yes. You can take, she can take, but mm -hmm. you scratch, mm -hmm. the exactly. other one won't scratch because <laughs> mm -hmm. of the allergies. Mm -hmm. Now, those are risks. That is why they say before you rush into GMO, before you rush, like, getting into it, it full, especially for African countries that do not have capacities to have serious research on it. Mm -hmm. We don't need to go full throttle. Mm -hmm. We need to go step by step, mm -hmm. you know. We mm -hmm. get it. Do like what they're doing in uh, in developed nations where they in the county. So that man who posted on, on, on Facebook, mm -hmm. the account is where they've written clearly GMO. Mm -hmm. There's GMO food mm -hmm. and GMO. Exactly. So it's your choice. Mm -hmm. If you want GMO, so yeah, at the counter the, there was GMO food. Mm. There are there people who had lined up. Yeah, to consume of course. It was somebody who on Facebook. No. On Facebook or, yeah, you're on Facebook. A Kenyan actually, either, that looked like US because they were selling it in dollars. Mm. Where you get bread, eh? big bread, mm -hmm. goes for one dollar. Big, big, big <laughs> GMO bread mm -hmm. goes for one dollar. Mm -hmm. The small uh, organic. organic bread, mm. which is four dollars, mm -hmm. In the count, only one remaining. Everybody has. Uh, but I'd, I'd rather consume what what I know, and co not consume <laughs> what I don't know. Because what? How come that bread is very big, and it's being sold at a very uh, low price? That is where we go to the pros and cons of G GMO. GMO. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the process do, at which they came to have this mm. made it easier and cheaper for them. For them, yeah. So they they make a better, bigger thing. Which is cheaper. Which is cheaper. Mm -hmm. The cost goes down. Cheap is expensive. Yep, I mean, that's where <laughs> Leave it for the expensive people. That's where the politics comes Leave it for in, the expensive eh? people. The information that is out there, people already, especially in the U.S., here in Kenya, we don't have that much of a conversation. Mm -hmm. The U.S. GMO and organic is a big, big... Can even sell somebody organic salt. <laughs> yes. Organic <laughs> somebody, salt. This yes. salt is organic. <laughs> and that is, that is <laughs> what... And you can sell it so well. And that is oh, why the, the National Biosafety Chair was saying uh, the GMO, if we open it to our market, it mm -hmm. is going to open also markets from the U.S. Mm -hmm. Because these companies that are producing these seeds are from U.S. Mm -hmm. But my concern is, 
my concern with GMO is now the small scale farmers. Mm -hmm. How are they going to be able to afford the seeds? Yes. You see, now that is where my concern comes in. Mm -hmm. Not in terms of the crop or anything. It is about the small scale farmers because we have so many small scale farmers in Kenya. Mm -hmm. but, but you know, when they open up the market, they, I'm telling you, some of, the prices of this, some of the prices of these seeds can be so cheap, you'll be shocked. Mm -hmm. Because unless you now the government wants to come and do a price regulation on certain seeds. Yes. Because when, you see, why, why we are talking about the bread becoming big mm -hmm. and the others. Because the cost of even doing all this is cheap. That's yeah. why it, tra it translates to the cost, the cost of the being final reduced, product. Yes. That means that probably even the seeds are very cheap. Yeah. And the, the companies that are ready to give subsidies to, to the common monarchy or to the common True. farm. Now it will depend on the government does it want to, to sustain what is there. I mean, does the K Kenyan farmer want to, the Kenyan government want to sustain or to protect mm -hmm. the seeds that are done locally like Kenya Seed Company and, mm -hmm. and the likes. Mm -hmm. So, probably uh, as we, we are almost coming to a conclusion of today's show, um, what do you think the needs to be done for the public to have more public participation on this GMO debate and also to raise awareness on uh, um, the whole subject on GMOs. <laughs> well, I I think the government should one have a task force, just like in 2013, because in 2013 the task force said that uh, the gov the Kenyan government was had some difficulties in handling the GMO. And when they say handling, they meant very many things. But I wish the task force would be there right now. Mm -hmm. And they go out there and they educate people. Educate people. And you make sure that they reach even the most, the local person out there. And they educate them. And they tell them the pros and the cons without hiding anything. Mm -hmm. So that people understand. Without saying, I will not give my child GMO. Uh, she will start growing wings. Mm. You know, <laughs> someone might just say that. But you see, that is someone who's misinformed. Mm. And it is the responsibility of the government to educate the people. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that is what should be done. And also, they try and see if the pros and the cons are many. They just draw a line, mm -hmm. the pros, the cons. Mm. If the cons are a little bit on the higher side, then mm -hmm. we see if we just go back to our way. If the pros are a bit uh, wider, mm. then we just say it's okay, we will have this. We'll try to maintain uh, the other companies like what Robert said, the Kenya Seed Company. And we'll also introduce the GMO to the market. Mm -hmm. Yes. Robert, what is, what is your take? Oh, she's almost <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I am sorry. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that is it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Public participation bring to the table these mm -hmm. come up with a task force get uh, locals get local farmers go to grassroots educate them tell them now this is the situation here yeah, yeah the, the government has a good argument we do not have uh, food I mean, this is supposed to you know, mitigate the security food security exactly. or we are not going to have food bank in the next couple of months so this is now like you said the way in options they look at now this is where we've been this is where we've reached how have we reached the p point of last resort so that we can go to GMO? And even if it's GMO, do we have to force the, the, the people? Exactly. To so exactly. The public participation. This is where the National Bell Safety Authority, with which people have just started hearing of it, and it has been there since 2013. <laughs> yes. <laughs> since there. 20, yes. We want to see more of it proactive, eh? mm -hmm. Make, uh, go to media. They use the media platform educating people what GMO is. The Nyumbakumi initiative. We have the yeah. Nyumbakumis. Talk to people. They know they, people. Yeah, mm -hmm. they put more budget to this uh, safety authority mm -hmm. to educate farmers. Go there, sure. talk to farmers. Tell them, okay, this is what will happen now. These are the seeds that will be important. Mm -hmm. These seeds originates from this country, mm -hmm. and this is the research that was done now. Mm -hmm. This is what will happen, pros and cons. Not telling people it will grow wings. And you don't have substantive uh, exactly uh, evidence, yeah. or you show them something. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting. Um, I, uh, my take uh, will be uh, actually the public participation. Uh, we need more people to be aware on uh, 
the GMOs, what exactly are they? Because most of the farmers we've talked to, when you ask them about GMO, they're like, Yani kitumbaya, yo, inaribu mchanga, oh, yo, yezi mea tena, yo, but they don't know, like, really what exactly it is. So public participation is really required. Like, even me, I don't really understand the GMOs, because I'm yet to be told, what is this thing that is being put in these crops <laughs> that makes them resilient? Like, I just need to be uh, told, talk like a small kid, this is the crop, you take it like this, you add this. Because uh, uh, here there's the issue of the terminator gene. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Do you want to touch on it? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> why, you, why are you running away? Why are you running away? Because you know, because you know. Yeah, I mean, what is the terminator so, gene? So some of this, uh, some of these things are just blown out of proportion, the proportion just because mm. of a lot of mis uh, information. Misinformation, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'd, I'd rather. Okay, I'll give a. Ch I'm seeing. I'm seeing. I have so many guys from my own, uh, like Audrey. I'll give people like Audrey to <laughs> go research and write it in our page. Yeah? <laughs> the Terminator gene. That is our homework for the people out there. I want to say because some of these things are very controversial. Mm -hmm. We can talk about them here, and we don't have proper facts mm -hmm. and information about it. Mm -hmm. But realize, some 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 cells are very. Uh, uh, how can I explain it? especially when it comes to aggression and regression yeah there's some cells that will want to come up with uh, trying to get <laughs> the right one yeah, yeah. <laughs> but i'm sure my people here will be able to explain to us you uh, know in, in the comment section yes kindly uh, scientists uh, since you have now decided to come out from where you usually hide doing your researches Kindly come out now to our comment section and tell us about what is this thing that is usually added to these crops, to these animals. Like right now, Kajado, people should come to Kajado and see the way animals fell during the drought. Like mm -hmm. you could walk down the streets and animals were just dying. Like there now I can accept we need the GMO. Oh, let me, let me, yesterday, I, 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 when I was coming, mm -hmm. I met a hyena eating a dead zebra. On my no. way to my place, dead zebra, and dead yeah, carcass. Yeah, those animals are still falling mm -hmm. down, even if we are still having rain. They're still dying. Yeah. Yes, they are. They're still dying, mm -hmm. So that is how effect of of uh, drought can be able to. You know, once it, some once your body becomes very weak, even just eating mm -hmm. won't be able to, to sustain. But I'm imagining how that animal would look like. A GMO one yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that does not require food or water. They are very. I think I picked. Do we have? Do we have? Do I, have I GMO, picture them GMO adorable. Livestock. Have you heard of Molly? Molly the sheep. Most yes, Molly me the probably sheep was the first uh, genetically modified, the first cloned sheep. <laughs> cloning, cloning here is a form of genetic, uh, genetic, genetically modifying an animal. Just picked. Uh, uh, they, they just picked a, a G, they, like your genetic makeup, your your DNA, mm. and then they just replicated it. They make somebody like you, you with all like ninety nine percent your your genetic makeup. The way your eyes are, your nose are. Actually, right now in the US, <laughs> if you, if you like if your cat or your dog is old, mm -hmm. and you feel like it's about to die, instead of uh, going to get another dog, what they do is. They there's a company that does that. Mm -hmm. You've forgotten the name of the, the company. You take, you pay, they take the, the clone, the mm -hmm. they clone your dog or they clone your cat. So that when this dies, you have wow, you still have that cat yeah. of yours. So you can have the same animal like even. In your lifetime. <laughs> yeah. They just clone it and then you have it. You, it then somebody will help me see the name of that cloning company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Now, this conversation is becoming more interesting. Like, if uh, people can clone even an animal, can I request to be cloned? No, not not to be uh, cloned. No, not to be not to be not cloned. To be. Humans. I want to be modified. Uh, no, <laughs> it's not ethical, but they do, and they put you I'm in. Re I'm requesting to be modified. <laughs> like, uh, uh, my height is do, not do, do, is do, not is is do, not do, allowing do, me to do so many things. So I want to be. Would want to live forever, mm -hmm. but they mm -hmm. still can't because of the regulations. And all. like, if, if you want to live forever, and you feel like your heart is a bit low, they go and 
change your heart change and your heart. replace mm. it. It happens. It's, oh, those it are, can't. It's, those are things that have to be regulated because it's unethical. Why? You know? Why? Uh, yeah, we are not gods to make people live forever. You see? We're just given brains to help us uh, survive, survive mm. in this world. But mm. again, it's also the ecosystem. Mm. Like, we want to even ask yourself, how many trees have you planted? Because Robert talked about climate. Yeah. How we have many planted trees? ten. <laughs> How many Shine. have you planted? I think 45 now. Ah, okay, we are sorry. <laughs> I've planted thousands of trees. That's why I said I'm not supposed to be in this, this discussion because <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm seated with the wrong people. So I'm being timed down. Our time uh, has actually come to uh, close. And um, uh, this has been an interesting discussion. I was hoping to have a debate. But uh, it has been uh, more of an educative discussion. <laughs> uh, we'll need to have a short breather, take some water because uh, we are burning here uh, to learn more about uh, the genetically modified uh, organisms. I've really learned a lot. I could be even animals can uh, be modified. Let's take a quick breather. We'll be back shortly. Greenhouse is the most common method of farming in the country. But what is a greenhouse? In other words, a greenhouse is a building where plants that need to be protected are grown. It is mainly constructed by galvanized steel, iron, polythene plastic or glass for maximum sunlight to pass through. A greenhouse can be used to grow different vegetables, fruits or flowers. In addition, greenhouses are important as they shield crops from excess cold heat or unwanted pests and most importantly have crops at the time of the year when they can't be grown outdoors. Greenhouse is an efficient method of farming and can be readily adopted. Agriculture is the art and science of cultivating the soil, growing crops, and raising livestock. Agriculture provides most of the world's food and fabrics. It is not only a source of food and income, but also creates employment opportunities for many people in the world. Over 1 billion people worldwide work in agriculture, generating 2.4 trillion for the global economy. The global impact of farming on the environment is revealed that 40% of the Earth's land is now given over to agriculture. Agricultural development is one of the most powerful tools to end extreme poverty boost shared prosperity 
and feed a projected 9.7 billion people by 2050. And we, the Our Farmers Media, roll the carpet for you as we welcome you to our thrilling farm visits to different farmers that educate and inspire you in different sectors in agriculture. Catch us also on our shows on all our social media platforms as we bring you educative and informative information that will help you learn and guide you on your agriculture journey to success. Our farmers attain knowledge and grow profits. Our farmers is the home of Africa Farmers Club. In, and by extension, African farmers. The whole idea behind uh, farmers is to transform the image of an African farmer from a producer into an agripreneur. Somebody who actually does not think about how to produce onions, but how much is going to be used to produce onions. And so that, that, that way then they can be able to transform their vision, they can be able to look at their farms as businesses, and they can be able to know when to engage with the market. What we have done is that we have developed a hub where farmers bring their, co their, their information, bring their questions, their challenges, and other farmers are there to come out and help. Facebook has not just been instrumental. Facebook has been a working partner for myself as well. And uh, how they have, F Facebook has actually transformed the way we relate an open platform. My background is in tech, and I know it, you cannot build a platform that can reach out to so many people. Initially, it was just a few farmers in two counties, Machakos County and Kajado counties, but now it has transformed. We have uh, a stronger membership from Nigeria and Zambia than even Kenya itself, you know. And the reason behind this is the messages I get from different farmers across Africa. And then something interesting came to my mind and I thought about using the camera. Uh, every time I visited farmers, I would be able to post uh, in the community, in the group, in my own profile, and just share the story of the farmer that I visited. And then I asked myself, why wouldn't I get this information, develop it in a way that other people can be able to benefit? If we go for a training, how do we capture that so that those who are not, the farmers who are not able to come for that training can still benefit? And hence the birth of uh, a farmer's media. Our mission as an organization is to, he to, to help farmers, African farmers, to attain knowledge and grow profits. Yes, and welcome back to the Evening Farm Drive. Uh, we've had a very educative show talking about GMOs, uh, they are way to food security. Actually, I don't know what to say. Like, hey, you guys have really educated me. <laughs> I feel like I've learned so much today. <laughs> you, you I, can I, can we'll I can write a book. I can write a book. I think we'll send you an invoice. <laughs> 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 kindly do, kindly do. Mm. Yeah, so there's a lot of comments coming through. Um, someone is saying, uh, okay, let me not say this. Uh, Noah is watching from somewhere. He's saying, nice show. Mokia, do you have any uh, comments to sample? Yeah, I'm having uh, my good friend, Hodari. Hodari, I can see you. Thank you for following. I'm having Moses, Kinyua, Doc, Moses, my good friend Moses there, uh, Enoch. Good, good, good job, yeah? Mm. Odari, thank you so much for, for following. And uh, if you have any question, just post it there. We're ready, ready to, uh, to answer you in any way. Because not everybody, you know, there are a few, you might be having knowledge that can help somebody. And probably you might be as having a question that you can be helped here and, nobody, and you don't know how to ask about it. So this is the chance you can always ask us anything. Mm. Jack is here. No, we don't ask me about GMOs. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can ask me to ask for you the question. Actually, Moses <laughs> is telling me, now he's very right. Moses mm. is saying that mm. we've been eating GMOs and we've never known. Sure. You know, like us who are, I think we are between millennials and, <laughs> and millennials somewhere there. Don't even mention that. CCNA, we are not millennials. 
you know, this is when after importation of uh, uh, genetically modified many organisms started getting to the world market in the 90s and early 2000s. So from that period, maybe you've been eating GMOs all this time, you never know. Mm. You can't defend yourself because also when you travel, mm -hmm. you don't know what you have eaten. Maybe you've gone outside the country. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah. That's why me, I always insist on in eating indigenous foods. Like, I just like the food, the way it tastes, the original food, not this one that is CG, mm. Managu, the hybrid, CG, sure this hybrid. Time, when they go to US, they'll carry their suitcase with <laughs> greens and maize flour. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know. <laughs> Actually, but I don't, I don't eat nini with the, the pack packaged flour. I just go get my maize, take it to the portion meal, like I eat my original food. <laughs> one time I did that, I went to Gotogam, I mixed it with the soya, <laughs> I mixed it with a few things, and I made my ugali. Like, I just had something small and I was feeling very good. Yeah? <laughs> Your <laughs> food kabisa. Because the kisiagis, you can have the ones, especially in the river, I live in the village, mm -hmm. there you'll get, not even, even expensive, mm -hmm. get it all done. They'll do it for you. They'll True. mix jam, they'll mm -hmm. mix uh, soya, they'll mix mm -hmm. everything. By the time you're taking, it's very nutritious. True. Mm. Yeah, so, but at, at the end of the day, like you, all of you have just said, at one point or another, we've all consumed GMOs. But um, we need to be cautious uh, because, like, um, you, we started the show, you talked about uh, politics, greed, um, what I, I usually normally say is we need just to be our brother's keeper. Like, once you notice there's something that is not good in the market, like, we need to raise the alarm. So just like, uh, you see, like, even the way they're saying how uh, this uh, COVID came. Mm. Initially, they, they were saying uh, some full air about. Some full about, and that is why it became sick. Probably a few people were playing around with such things, and you know, so a single mistake, a single labor, a laboratory mistake, mm -hmm. especially when we're playing with the GMO, mm -hmm. can destroy the whole world. Mm -hmm. And that is where a lot of keenness, a lot of uh, regulations have to be put in place. Otherwise, you might release something to a third world country and wipe all everybody, yeah. or you can make people barren. Mm -hmm. uh, children who are, who, are, who are growing by just altering one single gene. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that reminds me the politics that was around and the misinformation that was around at the COVID jab. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For yeah. those women who have not yet given birth yeah. and all that. Yeah. Yeah, so. What, that? Yeah. Yeah. what happened? What happened to those meetings? <laughs> those meetings? Yeah, that is what you can't mention here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> It, you know, it's the same myths that uh, accompanied GMO, mm -hmm. and, and the conversation came back mm -hmm. about GMOs, how dangerous are they, you know. Now people just uh, are, are transfixed on how dangerous they can be, of which we know, as scientists, we'll tell you the truth. Should there be a, a small, even the slightest of mistake can wipe up, wipe, wipe out a whole generation. Mm -hmm. uh, like I told you about that, uh, that bacteria that was supposed to be put on soil, mm -hmm. and st they realize if it's put on soil, it clears, it mutates and, mutates and destroys a whole mm -hmm. vege uh, vegetation, mm -hmm. and nothing can grow in that vegetation whatsoever. So imagine if that thing came to the world, couldn't be, the planet could be barren. Could, right could not even be alive and I think to talk what, about this. What everyone needs is just to have a conscience. Yeah. At least have a conscience. Mm -hmm. Even for the scientists who are doing the research and all but, but you know, not, not everybody is like you or you <laughs> as a conscience. Exactly. You know? There are people who have so much greed that they do not even care to see somebody. As long as I get the money, mm -hmm. and that is where capitalism has driven us into we embrace capitalism without even knowing how far, mm -hmm. how bad it will, how I'll be looking at how can I make money out of uh, out of Jackie. You know, mm -hmm. Jackie I has think this those people are the ones now. They need to take out their brains. Out of the sand, like an ostrich. Yes. Right? You see something, but your head is in the sand. <laughs> because how can you be like that? Like I, even if it is greed. That's going overboard. Yeah, but if, if you have also poor leadership, mm -hmm. uh, if you have lead, leaders who are driven by greed, 
can end up destroying your own people without knowing mm -hmm. your greed. True. Yeah. Interesting. So that has been uh, the Evening Drive show. I just want to lead, to end the show today by one quote I'm seeing here about biotechnology saved the Hawaiian papaya industry after a virus nearly wiped the crop out. I think it's interesting because we are talking about biotechnology and GMOs. I recently had an interview with the, the uh, executive director of Alliance for Science and she tried to explain uh, the difference between the, they are introducing, I don't know, gene editing. Now we are talking about gene modification. Mwakio, you also mentioned about gene breeding. Mm -hmm. Like, there's just so much in the agriculture sector that um, people need to know and uh, get awareness about so that uh, in the near future we can ensure that we are food secure and we are he eating healthy meals, right? True. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah, so thank you so much, guys, for making time to be with me. I hope tomorrow you'll be there, but we'll not be talking about <laughs> GMOs. We'll be talking about different things. Uh, probably your closing remarks as we close today's show. I'll keep on saying we should need to embrace technology. We embrace, we embrace uh, new things cautiously. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'd just like to say that people should have an open mind. Try to have an open mind and be ready to learn. Get information so that... When you argue something, you have your facts right. Mm. Very true. Mm. Interesting. That has been the Evening Farm Drive with me, Jackie Mo Kamakawa Kamake. I'll be seeing you tomorrow, 3 to 5 p.m. If you have any questions, do like and uh, post on our Facebook platform at a Farmers Media. For now, it's goodbye.